Let us pray. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be praised. My Redeemer, you are worthy to be praised. Almighty God, you are worthy to be praised. King of kings, Lord of lords, the unchangeable changer, you are worthy to be praised. Lord of hosts, you are worthy to be praised. We can never thank you enough for the victories that you have given to us. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for keeping the pandemic at check. Because we believe, Lord God Almighty, that but for you, the damage would have been much more. And we trust you, Lord God Almighty, that even as you have shown mercy to us here in Nigeria, for example, you will also show mercy to the rest of the world. Yes. Father, please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Yes. Lord, even as we continue with our studies about the wonders of you, the Almighty God, we pray that today again you will perform wonders in the life of your children. Amen. That all those who are listening to your word today will have a very special contact with you Amen. that will lead them to something far, far greater. Amen. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Let someone shout hallelujah. Please be seated. We are continuing with our series within the series as we go to part two of Wonders of Divine Contact. Our text, as you remember, is Isaiah chapter 41 from verse 10 to 13 Isaiah 41 from verse 10 to 13 Fear thou not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God I will strengthen thee yea I will help thee yea I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Amen. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. Amen. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Amen. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing Amen. and as a thing of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will uphold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Amen. In the first part of this mini series, within the series, like I told you last week, the, the series we are dealing with, of course, is the wonders of God. But um, 
we want to discuss the wonders of divine contact. And I told you last week it's something so wide that we can't finish it in one Sunday sermon. As a matter of fact, it's going to have more than two parts. We'll probably be going on to four parts. But we learned last Sunday that the first contact between God, the Almighty, all sufficient, all wise, all knowing God, primarily to activate the destiny of man. We learned last Sunday that everybody has a destiny, but the, in the case of many people, the destiny will lie dormant until there is a contact between God and the person concerned. And we explained in details all about that. So if you missed last Sunday, someone, maybe you will need to get the tape. Now, the second contact between God and man usually leads to promotion. And then a third contact will lead to perfection. First contact activates destiny. Second contact leads to promotion. Third contact leads to perfection. Now then you begin to wonder, can anything be better than that? Well, you will learn next Sunday that there is something called permanent contact. And then you see what that one can produce. Now let's talk about the second contact briefly. Everybody knows, at least those of us who are children of God, we are fully aware that God is the promoter. The Bible made it clear, promotion comes from God. And that God can promote the most unlikely persons. We've learned this in the past. First Samuel chapter 2, verse 8. First Samuel 2, verse 8. A God can pick up a beggar from the dunghill and promote him until he becomes royalty. Of course, we also know, by the time we begin to discuss the third contact, we also know that our God is perfect. James chapter 1, verse 17. James chapter 1, verse 17 tells us that every good and perfect gifts come from God. And this God has no variableness at all, nothing to tempt, to tinter, or tamper with his perfection. As a matter of fact, in Mark chapter 7, from verse 32 to 37, Mark 7, 32 to 37, the Bible says, he does everything well. So what happens when there is a second contact between God and a person? Let's take the case of Joshua as an example. As we learned last Sunday, Joshua had his first direct contact with God when God said to Moses, lay your hands on him. And then the second contact now came 
after Moses died, in Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8, Joshua 1, from verse 1 to 8, then God transferred a servant, a messenger of Moses to the position of head of state. He became the leader of a nation. Now that is some serious promotion. As a matter of fact, when God told Joshua, you are taking over from Moses, he trembled. He was so frightened, God had to repeat three times. Be strong and of a good courage. And I don't blame him. <laughs> I mean, but if you are a messenger, and then all of a sudden, God tells you you are going to become head of state, and you know the kind of state that was at that time, <laughs> the, the kind of state that even your master found difficult to handle, you will tremble. Or take David as another example. David had a first encounter with God when God poured oil on his head through Samuel. And he became king among his brethren. He was anointed king among his brethren. In African parlance, we will call him king of tomorrow. Because at that time, there was still King Saul on the throne. Very, very much on the throne. And he was there on that throne for another 13 years. But then, David had a second contact with God. And that is in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4. This time, he was anointed again as king of Judah. Promotion now from king among his brethren king at home to now king of Judah. Or take Elisha. He had his first encounter with God when he was plowing in the field. A mantle fell on him. But then after the little discussion between him and Elijah, Elijah picked up his mantle again. He, he didn't leave it with him. And then came Second Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15. Second Kings chapter 2, from verse 9 to 15. And the mantle now came, dropped while Elijah was being taken. Was now picked up by... Elisha and nobody to challenge him for picking it up and that very day the one who was a son of the prophet became the father of all the prophets because they all came and bowed down to him second contact move him from being one of the sons of the prophets to being a prophet himself. Oh, we want to take maybe just one more example before we begin to go deeper. Take Peter. His first contact came in Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. Was a fisherman. He thought he was going to be a fisherman all the days of his life. Then he had a first contact with the Almighty God, and his destiny became activated. He was going to be 
a fisher of men. But then he had a second divine contact in John chapter 21 from verse 1 to 17. John 21 from verse 1 to 17. This time round, the Lord Jesus Christ had died, rose from the dead. Peter felt, hey, let's forget about being fisher of men. Let me go back to my original fishing. And then he had another contact. And this time around, Jesus told him, you won't be just the fisher of men. You'll be the one feeding my flock. You'll be the one who will feed my lambs. You are the one who will feed my sheep. You are the one who will be leading the people I will be leaving behind. Tremendous promotion. It's like saying to a fellow who is probably, shall we call him, a Sunday school teacher, that from now on, you are general overseer. Not a small promotion at all. Now the question is, who needs a second church? Because I know that last Sunday many of you must have prayed hard and I believe that my God had answered your prayer and had given you a touch. I believe many of you had even had contacts with God, maybe in your dreams or one way or the other. Why ask for a second touch? Because we all know there are advantages in being on top. And there are disadvantages in being beneath. I'm yet to find somebody who will say no to promotion. Because we all know, <laughs> we know that those who are beneath, they will drink from the water that the one on top of the mountain had washed into. Oh, I'm, I'm sure we, we are not so naive as not to know why people who want to be our rulers come begging us and at times trying to even pay us to vote for them. Because I mean, the moment you become president, shall we say, or governor, hey, when you want to pass, they will close the road for you. Until you have gone, those of us who voted for, for you, <laughs> we have to wait. We all know, you don't have to be told that uh, if they say there is power failure, it's not in natural rock. <laughs> no, no. If we say there is scarcity of water, it is not in government house. You know that. Everybody will want promotion. And I am praying for all of you listening to me today. Your promotion begins right now. Amen. But there's much more. Much, much more. For example, in Second Samuel chapter 24, from verse 1 to 15. Second Samuel 24, from verse 1 to 15. The Bible tells us that David conducted a census against the wish of God. God got, God got angry. So I'm going to punish you for what you've done. And he told him to choose what kind of punishment he wanted. Uh, and he said, I, I would rather fall into the hand of God than to the hand of men. So God said, oh, fine, I know what you have chosen. And a terrible pestilence broke out. The Bible said, as a result of that pestilence, 
70,000 people died in the land. It will interest you to know that not a single one died in the palace. Not one. Oh, definitely it pays to be on top. It is not a pleasant thing to be at the bottom. That's why the Almighty God said, you shall be head and not tail. Because we will see something very interesting in Exodus chapter 4 from verse 1 to 4. Exodus 4 from verse 1 to 4. When God told Moses, throw down the rod that is in your hand. And the rod became a serpent. And Moses fled from the serpent because it was a dangerous serpent. God told him, hold the serpent by the tail. Even a dangerous serpent can still be held by the tail, not the head. Oh, I pray for every one of you listening to me today. You shall be head. Amen. And you will never be tail. Amen. So we all need a second touch. So that we can be promoted. God wants us to be promoted. The good news is... There is always room at the top. I'm sure you've heard the statement again and again. There's always room at the top. If you read Daniel chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3, Daniel 6 from verse 1 to 3, the Bible spoke about a king who had many provinces under him. And he had a lot of governors governing over these prophecies. And then he selected three out of the numerous ones to be supervising the 120. But he still looked among the three and said, I want to make one the leader of the three. And that fellow was Daniel. The almighty God can make you the best among the best. But when they gather the best together and they are looking for someone who will be number one among the best, ah, may you be the one in Jesus' name. Yeah. In fact, the testimony of one of my children somewhere in the United Kingdom. They made an, an advertisement for a particular position. That position was very, very lucrative. And if I remember correctly, about 4,000 people applied. And so they began to shortlist. They shortlisted and number came down to, I think, about 400. And then they did interview number one and 400 came down to 100 and they did interview number two and 100 came down to I think uh, 10 and they did the final interview and my son won and we all shouted for joy if the almighty God is looking for the best among the best May you be the one he will pick in Jesus' name. There's always room at the top. Or you may hear them say, it is lonely at the top. That may be true. <laughs> but I think it's a very good kind of loneliness. <laughs> lonely at the top. The people at the top don't want to leave. So you need a second touch. For promotion. Now, what about the third touch? 
That one, like I said, is for perfection. Perfection is a wonderful thing because, I mean, if you consider one or two examples uh, about what God had done, for example, in Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, the Bible tells us about a man with a withered hand. And when Jesus Christ saw this man, in spite of the uh, anger of those who are around, they don't want the withered hand to be healed, Jesus asked him to stand forth and to stretch forth his hand. And when he stretched it forth, the Bible said he became as whole as the other. That means the healing did not stop halfway. Oh, I'm sure you know many people who are seriously sick, and then they went to the hospital, and the doctors did their best, and the fellow recovers, quote and unquote. Recovers because they say, okay, you will not die, but for the rest of your life, you will be taking the following drugs consistently. And that's not the way my God does it. When he heals you, he heals you completely, perfectly. Let me give you another example. In, in Mark chapter 8, from verse 22 to 25. Mark 8, 22 to 25. The Bible said they brought a blind man to Jesus Christ. And he took him by the hand. Now that is contact number one led him out away from the crowd and then spit on his eyes touched his eyes contact number two and said what can you see ah, the man lifted up his eyes said, ah, I can see men like trees and that's promotion <laughs> he couldn't see anything before. Now, at least he could see men walking like trees. But God didn't stop there. He had a third contact because he touched him again and said, Okay, now, how do you see? He said, Ah, I see perfectly. I pray for every one of you listening to me in any form of ailment. May your healing come today and may it come perfectly. Amen. Healing is good, but recreation is better. Because recreation will give you perfect health. I mean, for example, in 2 Kings chapter 5, from verse 1 to 14, 2 Kings 5, from verse 1 to 14, when the Almighty God healed Naaman, the Bible said he came out of the river the seventh time with his skin like that of a newborn baby. That's perfection. Or consider the case. In Exodus chapter 14 from verse 1 to 28, Exodus 14 from verse 1 to 28, Israel had been freed from the bondage of Egypt. They got to the Red Sea and they looked back and the fellow who had said you can go now says, no, you are coming back. Their deliverance was not complete until all those who could bring them back into captivity drowned. It's only then they can now say, hey, glory be to God, we are free indeed. I'm not sure you understand what happened in Mark chapter 5 from verse 2. To 19. You've had me refer to this case again and again because I spent quality time 
studying the story of the madman of Gadara. Maybe one of these days, God will give me an opportunity to write a book about him. You know, when God cast out the demons in him, and the demon said, all right, you've driven us out of this man. Let us go into the swine. God gave permission. And you know what followed? <laughs> the Bible said the, the swine ran headlong into the sea and drowned. That madman of Gadara was only completely free when all the demons that were tormenting him were drowned. They drowned with the swine. It was only then that Jesus Christ could now say to the madman, now begin as an evangelist. I pray for every one of you listening to me today. If there are any evil force or forces still showing interest in you, today will be their total destruction. Yeah. Perfection is essential. That's why you need the third touch. And when you look at the cases, some of the cases that I've mentioned, you will see how first touch led to something, second touch led to something, third touch led to another thing. Let, let, let me just pick uh, maybe about three examples before we conclude for today. Consider Moses. His first contact came in Exodus chapter 3 from verse 1 to 15. Exodus 3, 1 to 15. That's when he saw the bush burning and the bush was not consumed. That's when he had his first contact with God and from that day onward, his destiny became activated. It wasn't the same ever again. But then, the second contact that he had with God in Exodus chapter 19 from verse 1 to 9, Exodus 19 from verse 1 to 9, was not in a flame of fire, but in a thick cloud. And God told him, I am doing this, visiting you the second time, so that from now on, the people will believe you forever. They won't doubt you anymore. You are promoted. The Bible said in Exodus chapter 33 from verse 10 to 11, Exodus 33 from verse 10 to 11, the people saw the cloudy pillar. But the Lord spake to Moses face to face as a man speaks unto his friend. That is promotion. I'm sure, even if it is to be able to hear God clearly, if that is the reason you are going to cry to God for a second touch, I think that will be worth it. But God didn't stop there. Or rather, Moses didn't stop there. <laughs> Because he cried to God in Exodus 33, from verse 18 to 23. Exodus 33, from verse 18 to 23, he said, God, thank you. Uh, we've had these two contacts, but I would like to see you. Show me your glory. Yes, we've been talking. You've been, I've been hearing your voice. I mean, you've been treating me as a friend. You can see me. I can see you. I want a perfect relationship. You know the rest of the story. God said, all right, what you've asked for is a very, very dangerous thing. If you see me, you will die. But because we are friends now, you have been promoted. I will put you in the cleft of a rock, cover your face with my hand. And just as I'm passing by, as I'm about to disappear, I let you catch a glimpse 
of my behind. <laughs> Moses said, half a bread is better than nothing. He saw the glory of God. And the Bible said in Exodus 34, the following chapter, Exodus 34 from verse 29 to 35, Exodus 34, 29 to 35, from that day onward, the face of Moses shone like the sun. Anytime he wanted to speak, I mean, the people saw him coming after that encounter and they ran. Because his face was no longer the face of an ordinary man. He had to cover his face with a veil before he could speak to the people. I was just all, you know, one of my childish ways of uh, thinking. I was wondering uh, what happened to his wife. <laughs> my husband went out. He came back now. I can't even look at his face. What a wonderful kind of relationship. And you know why? I mean, you know what perfection really did to Moses. That third encounter, that Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 will tell you. Deuteronomy 34 verse 7 tells you that at the age of 120, he didn't need glasses. <laughs> His eyes were as sharp as when he was born. His energy was the same as of that of a very strong young man. Surely you need a second touch for promotion and a third one for perfection. Let's take Elisha. My friend Elisha. He had his first contact like I told you before in 1 Kings chapter 19. 1 Kings chapter 19 from verse 19 to 21. That was when his destiny became activated. Sir, you are not born to be an ordinary farmer. You are born for greatness. And you know the rest of the story. Then the second contact came in 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to 15. 2 Kings chapter 2 from verse 9 to 15 when finally he really now owned the mantu and became as it were the ruler of all the prophets but he had a third contact you have to search for it to find it and you will find it in second king chapter 3 from verse 10 to 15 second king chapter 3 from verse 10 to 15 some kings came to him wanted direction and one of the kings was an idol worshiper so he got angry he lost his temper and as he did the holy spirit that had been with him that he got during the second counter withdrew when he sobered down and there's a lesson for those of you who talk about righteous indignation. Uh, you say you, <laughs> some of you call your temper righteous indignation. He was righteously indignant. Uh, indi righteously, I do call it indignant. But the Holy Spirit withdrew. He had to call for a minstrel to, to sing praises to God before the Holy Spirit came back. And he had a third contact. From that moment onward, Elisha became perfect. And I'll prove it to you. In 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 23 to 24, 2 Kings chapter 2, from verse 23 to 24, after he has received a double portion of the spirit of Elijah, and he was going, and then some children, children, little children, 
began to call him, bow the dead man, get away from here, get away from here. Ah, his temper rose. He turned, looked at them, and cursed them in the name of the Lord. With the tremendous power he just received, several children died that day. But after the, second, the third contact, mm -mm, you will never find him doing that kind of thing again. As a matter of fact, in 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 8 to 23, 2 Kings chapter 6, from verse 8 to 23, when the king sent an army to go and arrest him, because by now his power had become legendary, I mean, <laughs> you want to arrest a woman and you sent an army, a man who had no weapons, you will know what that one means. He arrested the army, led them to enemy territory. And when the king saw the whole army arrested, their mind blindfolded, I said to Elisha, my father, shall I kill them? My father, shall I kill them? He said, ah, no, <laughs> no, feed them. And that's a long way from the man who slaughtered children because they rebuked him to a man now who arrested an army and fed them. We're talking about perfection now. Maybe I give you the final example. Peter, I told you the first contact came when he was fishing and Jesus stepped in, Luke chapter 5, from verse 1 to 11. And then the second contact came in John 21, from verse 1 to 17, when he was promoted from being a fisher of men to the leader of the flock. And then he had a third contact in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 41. Acts 2, from verse 1 to 41. And there was no stopping him any longer. Because when the Holy Spirit came on him on the day of Pentecost, Peter really became Peter. One sermon, 3,000 souls saved. No more fear of anybody. He could now, even his shadow now, could heal the sick. Now let me conclude. Can I attain perfection? Oh, Psalm 138 verse 8. Psalm 138 verse 8 says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. God, it's written. Perfection is meant for you. All you need to do is ask. John chapter 16, verse 24. John 16, verse 24. The Lord says, Ask till your joy be full. And that's what you are going to do today. But before the rest of us begin to cry to God for perfection, there are those who have not even started the journey at all. There are those who have not even had any contact with God at all. But you can have one today. You can surrender your life to Him. You can kneel at the foot of the cross and cry to Jesus and say, please save my soul. Transform me completely. Let me have a brand new beginning. If you really mean it, you want to say bye-bye to a life of sin, it's more than ready to receive you, to save your soul, and to give a brand new beginning. So wherever you are, if you bow your heads in prayer 
and cry to God for the salvation of your soul, I will be more than willing to join you in prayers right now. So will you please bow your heads and cry to the Almighty God for salvation of your soul, and I will pray with you in a moment. Call on him. Ask him to be merciful unto you. Ask him to please save your soul. Promise him that from now on you will serve him and you will do his will for the rest of your life. And I will pray with you in a moment. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. My Father and my God, I want to thank you once again for your word. And I want to thank you for those who have heard and have decided, ah, I want this contact with God. You promised, Lord, that whosoever will come unto you, you will know why it's cast out. They've come to you now, Father. Please receive them. Amen. Save their souls. Amen. Let your blood wash away their sins. Amen. Write their names in the book of life Amen. and give them a brand new beginning. Amen. And let this be the beginning of contacts with you for them. Amen. And my Father, my God, I'm also committing all those of us who are, have had contacts with you in the past. And we want a second contact. And some of us want a third one. Some of us even want more than three. As we cry to you today, Lord God Almighty, please grant our request. Amen. Promote us, O Lord. Amen. Bring us to perfection. Amen. And we will praise you for the rest of our lives. Amen. Thank you, my Father. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Now, those of you who have given your life to Jesus Christ, please get in contact with me as soon as possible so that I can continue to pray for you. And the rest of us who have had at least one contact or the other with the Lord, cry to him and ask him, please, Lord, I want a second contact for promotion. I want a third contact for perfection. And just go ahead and talk to him. And I believe God will answer your prayers in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Praise.